Hey, motherfuckers, it's Black Phil again. You want to win a five, se five second muffin cat peeling machine? Go to ellisnastymerchstore.com. Oh, damn, fuck that all up. <laughs> <laughs> Hey motherfuckers, it's Black Phil again, here with another merch plug for the Alice Nasty damn Charlie Murphy car giveaway. This is Eddie Murphy, his younger brother. <laughs> you want to win a five second muffin cap peeling machine, go to ellisnasty.com and the first link down below, get you some merch, win your damn, where the hell is that car at? It's at my house. Oh God, why is it there? Because it's fine. To, how am I supposed to do a merch plug without... Cause there's nothing wrong. It's not broken. I'm trying to sell. It's not broken. Yeah. So well, it's just sitting there chilling. Yeah. It's hibernating right now. Ford. I don't know. Giveaway yeah. ends Sunday. I don't know how many days yeah, this is. Yeah. I don't know how many days till the giveaway ends, but you can get you some shirts. We out of socks. And we got yarmulkes. I don't know how, but sweatshirts, uh, hats. Did I say hats already? We winter hats. hats. Yeah. Winter hats. Yeah. Toboggans. It's a nice little picture over there with me before pre dreads <laughs> with a toboggan on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So the giveaway ends Sunday. If you want to get entered to win, like Phil said, that five-second muffin cap peeler, go to lsnasty.com. It's the first link in the description below and get entered to win. Sunday is your last day to get entered. We'll do the drawing like midweek next week, but you have until Sunday to get entered to win. And we're going to give it away. Someone's going to come here and pick up their brand new, to them, five-second car. So let's get into today's video. we got a lot of work to do. Starting off today's video right. What what'd you, what'd you do, Phil? Uh, 400. You what? I paid to fix the 400. Why'd you have to pay to fix the 400? Because it muffin cat. Bro, it's been a year. Is is Phil's transmission services out of business right no, now? No, we're still in business. You still in business? Yeah, we just don't do 400. We do glides all day because those are easy. Because they only have they only have, have two, two gears. gears. Yeah. <laughs> Phil so, will turn anything into a two speed. I could turn that thing into what's that? A hydrostatic trans, the one with only one gear. Oh, in like a uh, in like a Ford Escape. Yeah. Yeah, that shit's yeah. bad ass. It's like a giant golf cart, <laughs> right there. All right, so what I'm doing is uh, I got some money. Phil got transmission fixed. I had to get the transmission out of the silver Mustang fixed, and I, I got a lot of shit. People are like, "Man, this is why I don't like this channel because you keep breaking shit." And like, bro, I, if if you pay attention to the channel, I'll show you guys the door because y'all love the freaking door. I don't know why you guys are so obsessed with this damn door and its color change. There it is. Um, yeah. So. I said when I purchased this car, the only thing that was wrong with it was it needed a transmission rebuild. And we did a video where we pulled the transmission apart and it had some issues with it. Uh, later, I took it up to my guy, Jason Wicker. He builds like all my transmissions and stuff like this. That's not like a Mark Mickey transmission. And uh, he goes through it, does a really great job. Jason Wicker is in Raleigh, uh, Wicked Performance. So I took Phil's transmission up there. That Phil turned into a two speed, but it was the wrong two speed. And then I took this one up there and he went through. Uh, this one had uh, a nice billet valve body with an internal brake. I think it's a transmission specialties valve body on it. And um, it had new clutches in it, but it didn't have like the direct drum or the the larger sprag or anything like that. So Jason went in and rebuilt it all and uh, and upgraded it the way it should have been or the way it should be for the kind of power this car will make. And we should be good to go. We're gonna put that back in there, put the converter in there. And one thing I have to do in today's video is I have to, uh, I'm gonna try to put the transmission in. I got a new yoke, a strange yoke, put that in there. And I'm gonna measure the drive shaft. I think we need to shorten the drive shaft. So that's what we have to do today is get this thing back running, make sure it's right. Uh, the converter spacing was slightly off. Ben, what do you say the converter spacing was slightly off? Yeah. So we're gonna get the converter spacing right and get the drive shaft length right. And uh, and then we... It was, it was uh... It had uh... So it's got the hub and yeah. you don't need the hub. And they had the space, like when they pulled it snug to the flex plate, they had a bunch of gap and they'd take it up with like a bunch of washers or spacers. Yep, so we'll get that. We'll get that all figured out. We'll get the drive shaft cut to length because the drive shaft was actually too long and it was pushing up against the uh, the back of the transmission and uh, just a couple little things. So what I'm gonna do now is it's like, it's it's about noon and I'm about to go to Raleigh to meet Jason Wicker to pick up the transmission. So uh, say a prayer for me. I broke a belt in my front steer tire on my truck. Everyone gave me shit. They're like, oh, get to 450 and put some dumb wheels on it. They're 12 ply tires. Like, so they're load rated. Only you can put a titty in a 12 ply 12 tire. I don't know. You but did it with your stretch wheels on your 2500 and... Now I'm a 450. And I'm just riding around like this, uh, 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 the whole time. So I'll take a look over here at Bradski's little dealio he's got going on. Uh, he's got the IDS brake kit on there. Uh, they're pretty badass. Look at those Willwood brakes, look very nice. Uh, major, major hang up though, major snag. Phil, what's the, what's the major hang up? No pun intended. Oh, these things. <laughs> what? <laughs> These things don't uh, take a 15-inch wheel. 
You need a 17. And you need different back spacing. Or you need a different back spacing. I want to know how he's going to get it. He's going to have to roll around on those rotors nah. just to get out of here. I'm going to put a spacer on. So, Brad's car is coming together nicely. It's about to head down to Jason Brazzle's to have the ladder bar put in and get the motor set in it. So, chipping away here, chipping away. I'm going to run to Raleigh. We'll get that stuff knocked out and get it back here and then uh, put that in that car. My goal is to get a bunch of cars running. So I got some parts rolling in for the Caprice, uh, doing a nice little build series with the guys down uh, at Blazing High Performance, uh, Chris and Dusty down there. So uh, they are going to get this thing right. I figured if I want a four-door daily driver, you guys know I tear everything up. We'll take it to some experts. See if I can get them. on camera how literally how embarrassing i'm embarrassed right now i'm, I'm just gonna end this clip I, I even did it with a handful of money and i just that's just embarrassing all right guys got the transmission in the back uh they got my invoice right there we got my mask <sighs> damn belt failed me <laughs> the damn belt where is it i don't know if you guys can see i probably parked on it this thing has a knot on it that's so large i can't i cannot drive it like i can't drive this thing i can't drive it I can't, I can't even move it down the road. This thing's, this tire's about to explode. Um, <laughs> it's so bad. It's so shitty. So I had to hit up my boy, Ron. You guys know Ron with the green Mustang. And um, he said he's going to come and tow me back to the shop. So uh, it's like a, I don't know, half hour drive. Ron saved my life right here. So you, if you guys ever need a tow, quick response tow in and recovery here in Raleigh, North Carolina. They're all over. They got big trucks. They got little trucks. They'll pull your 18 wheeler out. It don't matter. They got it all. Um, I have no words. I have no words. I can't believe it. It's not a Ford thing. And you know what? Everyone's commenting that like, oh, your tires, you, you got some, some BS tires. They're 12 ply tires. They're like meant for this shit. <sighs> Bruh. What is that? That's the biggest damn tow truck I've seen. No. Oh my god. Hey, I, do? I done. I, I hit something in my day. Look at it. Look at the damn knot on the front tire. The belt broke in the outside. Yeah, it's. It wasn't that bad, and then it got really bad, like right before I pulled up here. That's why I brought this truck. This god. I keep it exciting, don't I? <laughs> All right, shout out to my dude, Ron. Quick response towing recovery coming out here and getting it done. He's gonna tow me back to the shop. If you guys need a need a tow, hit him up in the Raleigh area or anywhere in North Carolina, give him a call. Quick response towing recovery. Folks at home, look at this knot. Look at this knot. Here, I'll, I'll go like this. Watch me spin this tire. Look at that. <laughs> look at that. That is ridiculous. All right, guys, we just got back. I know it's dark. My boy Ron towed me back here. Shout out to Ron. Um, tires is about to erupt. I got two transmissions in the back, so uh, it was stuck in neutral. I left my keys in the car and it got locked in the in the truck, so it was definitely eventful. Nothing to do with Ford. It was it was all my own doing. But I'm gonna pull this up here. We'll get these transmissions out. We got a lot of stuff going on in the shop right now, and I really need to be working on the Colorado, but I have not. Oh, it's pissed. Look at this. It's pissed. It is pissed. God, look at this wheel. I'm not turning my hand like that. Here, I get these transmittens out. And then tomorrow, I got to get new tires put on the front of my truck. It's going to rain. So we got a lot to do. We got a lot to do right now, boys. We got a lot to do. Transmitten has arrived. Have you seen this thing? This knot? Every time I'm filming, it's never on top. Oh, there it is. Look at it up here. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And everyone, I did tow it back. I did not feel like taking the drive shaft out of it. So I left the truck running the entire time in neutral. So the pump was, well, the pump was, yeah, the pump was spinning in the transmission. This is my hack. So I was like, take drive shaft. Nah, we'll put it in neutral. We'll leave it running. Trans core will be running. Pump the transmission. You some money, didn't you? I, no, Ron's my boy, so Ron was gonna charge oh, me trick Ron, drive. Oh, Ron, I didn't want to have to take the drive shaft oh, out. Oh, he was gonna have you take Well, the I didn't want Ron working too hard, you know? Oh. So we got uh, Phil's transmission here. Phil, your invoice was $1,900. <laughs> what? That sounds like your transmission invoice. No, no, it was yours. Oh, okay. Dang, he even painted them 
repainted them? This is yours here. Yeah, no, yeah, he gave know. me a fresh. He gave me a fresh uh, paint coat. Are you gonna pick that up like all by yourself, like your big, big bad Phil? Right, it's literally a four hundred. Oh, looking. It's not like I'm trying to pick up a six R eighty. Sorry, big or man. A six L eighty. Sorry, sorry, big man. Here, let me get you on this side so you don't have a silhouette. All right, guys, sitting right here, we have one of the TKM Performance Badass Package. This is one of the Black Sheep motors. This one is uh, is like the Black Sheep Street. It's a, a stock block, stock sleeves, um, very close to stock bore setup. As you can see, it's got top fuel hoops and the machine works absolutely beautiful. They got a little name on there. We got our squid belly motor and that's exactly what this is. We got our stock heads with top fuel hoops in it. They did a valve job, stock valves, uh, dual 660 springs. We got our brand new Johnson lifter. Shout out to my guy, Randy. We, you guys know we love Johnson lifters. Uh, they hooked us up with these. Uh, big fan of Johnson lifters. Run them in all my race cars that are hydraulic roller. And they honestly do make the best lifters. So if you need lifters, uh, contact Johnson lifters. Uh, I'm not just talking about it. You guys obviously see we went uh, a 427 on Johnson lifters. They're badass. So they'll work, uh, work, work great in your street car, work great in your race car. Highly recommend these. We're also running Johnson lifters in our LT build, so you can't go wrong. They have, these are link bar lifters or tie bar lifters as some call them. So as you can see, you don't need to run a lifter tray. They're locked in together. They have some that uh, are non-tie bar that you can run with a lifter tray if you want to keep more stock feel. Uh, four inch stroke crank, Cali's Ultra H beam rods, and then a badass Wisco piston per Kevin at TKM. And um, it's got a lamb cam in there. So you can see right there, we're gonna go race with the lamb cam. Very similar setup to what Justin Swanstrom has going on, but we'll go way faster. All right, we got the squid billy motor going up in the air. Uh, pretty excited about this build. Found a balancer laying around. This is like a Frankenstein balancer. Uh, this has the, what is this? This is the, the shell of like a Corvette balancer and then the hub of like a race balancer. Yeah. So together, They'll be perfect. We're not going to run anything. No accessory drive, nothing. So it'll be just a balancer up front um, and a timing. Well, I guess, do we even put a timing pointer on there? It goes off 58 tooth reluctor. Like, wait, I guess we could put a timing pointer on there just to verify. But um, this should be a very simple combo. Uh, we got a four pole cam gear, 58 tooth reluctor. So we'll run the crank sensor, factory GM crank sensor, factory GM, um, sorry, factory GM cam sensor factory GM crank sensor and then it should be good to go um slap it together some Johnson lifters probably get them soaking and uh and then we'll get them ready to throw in there and get a melon oil pump that'll be here tomorrow front cover be here tomorrow uh, put the heads on I got an ICT billet valley cover coming for it as well so we are uh we're just plugging away on parts there sounds like a pretty good combo we're gonna have the motor set in there and then we're gonna be all standing around it like king of the hill and we're gonna be like hell yeah what what next <laughs> have the motor set in there in no time all right guys here we are uh we got the lifter soaking we're gonna drop them in there uh no lifter trays so you don't have to worry about your lifter trays and lifter tray bolts because these are a uh, tie bar lifters so each two of them are going to be linked together so no lifter trays that's nice we'll get those thrown in there uh i got the copper head gaskets right there we'll hang them up over there and spray some copper head gasket spray on them generally use hylamar but we're not too worried about it this is going to be a, a dry motor so uh, it is set up it's half filled so if we do want to run, run water through it in the future we can uh, but that'd be in a different application that would be in a different application so i don't know what's going on over there um so uh we'll do the copper spray on it we'll get them set on here after the lifters are in we'll put the head studs in we'll slap the heads on uh and then we'll, we'll really tonight all we're worried about is we can get the heads on get them tight uh, i'll torque them down to 100 foot pounds and then we'll come back and check them in the morning and make sure they're all torqued down we got the head studs that were out of the version one black sheep because uh, they were half inch studs we don't need to use all of them because this is only a four bolt block so it doesn't have the extra bolt down here and it doesn't have the one in the head so we'll uh we'll get the lifters set in there and uh and roll on to the next step Right, so we got the lifters in and uh, they make it pretty easy for assembly up there at TKM. The way we got this engine assembled, there's multiple ways that you guys can get it at home. You could have them just do the machine work and you can assemble everything yourself. Uh, we got the short block with camshaft uh, installed in time. So uh, we got everything, sorry, degree. So we got uh, the crank, the whole bottom end and the camshaft in this. We don't have to mess with any of that. All only thing we have to do is put our oil pump on there. So we got the lifter set in there now. 
And uh, also from TKN, you can get assembled like fully 100% where you literally just put an intake on it or you can get an intake from them and you just drop it in your car and fire it up. So we got the lifters set in there. Everything's good to go. We're going to get uh, the head gaskets sprayed. So we got to get them sprayed with some copper spray and uh, we'll hang them up there and spray them and then we should be good to go. Get them slapped back on and uh, make it happen. All right, we got our copper head gasket sprayed. I know on camera, you guys probably can't tell the difference, but it's a nice smooth layer. It looks good on there. Uh, so we're gonna run over here and we're gonna slap them on the motor and then we'll run the head studs through it. What do you now think? What's it smell like in here? Terrible. What's it taste like in here? Uh, I mean, it's like a fog in here, honestly. Oh, just it's copper rough, yeah. right. I'm, I've got a nice tan though. <laughs> it's gotta go just like that. Or if we flip it over. <laughs> that looks good, folks. Watch, everyone's like, no, that goes on the front. Like, it doesn't matter. We're not running water through it, folks. It does not matter. What's cool is, like, these are cut out big, but then these are... This, this actually might go on the front. Who knows? It, it, it makes sense if it goes on the front. Doesn't apply to us. Half inch studs. Get them stuck in there. This one's gonna have all the clamping for us, huh? I need, do we have any ARP lube? Yeah. Phil, you got any lube? It's a lie. I guarantee he's got KY jelly in his box. He said he used it all. God, I wish I could zoom in right now. I know, we don't have the other camera going. We did opt for the half inch head stud option. You know, it's gonna be really hard to get 110 pounds with that. With this? With that, yeah. Yeah, dude. I don't like to use a, I'm not like any expert engine assembly guy, so like, if anyone like, don't judge me on my engine assembly, but I have put a, together a few LS engines that have blown up for lost oil pressure. Or, they ran for a minute though. They ran for a minute though. That's all that matters. Do I look like I know what's going on? For now, yeah. I'm doing great. We run these copper head gaskets on anything that's um, got that TKM top of the hoop stuff done to it. Uh, everything else we literally run just like um, LS9 or MLS multi-layer uh, gasket and um it seemed to work quite well for i mean the cows cow makes 1150 to the ground 1200 to the ground and it's on those standard mls ls9 gaskets so they don't have a bigger headset on it either does Not it it's standard, just arp standard stud yet. I, I mean real honestly like tune up if you get the tune up concern when you start like leaning on it or you got a bad tune up it could pop a head gasket pretty quick uh the top fuel hoop stuff is i like because it um you know you can reach a limit of the uh just the actual head gasket seal so if you do reach that limit um top fuel hoops help out a bunch so everyone's like oh it's a handicap to tuning and i'm like it's just your opinion on it like i don't i think there's a place for it and i think it's beneficial and if you have the option to have it i mean it doesn't hurt to have Put the head on, half inch studs. Got the uh, the big ones in there. Was there anything in the cylinders, like a towel? I don't know, I don't think so, why? Uh, I forgot to look. 
I've got to look see if there's a towel in one of the cylinders. There wouldn't have been. Well, look again. Look again, then. It won't hurt. Oh, it's already sticking. This is what happens. You see anything? Oh, there. Were, I can confirm. There's. God, look at how nice that copper spray. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's nice. Yeah, I can confirm there's no towel in there. I mean, listen. I've heard of crazier things. So, the four bolt stuff's nice. They're, the six bolt stuff. Um, they're cut out right here. They don't have these like stands there. This is for like the DOD stuff. So we got to run a valley cover that blocks that off. But if you go and you have to thread a stud that's in the head from the bottom. So that's a pain in the ass. For sure. For sure. Instead, we just have these little studs up here. Which I guess I could have put them in. But honestly, it's easier to put the head on without them. Mm -hmm. So screw these guys in. Make sure you put the right head on the right side of the motor and the left head on the left side of the motor. Right, Ben? That's right. It's very important to get your head on the right side. It's very important. You can look at me and laugh. It's very important. Look at these little 660 springs. Look at these cute little guys. Just chilling. God, I can't wait. Hey, grab, grab a set of shaft mount rockers and throw them on here. Just see what it looks like. Badass, uh, what are these, 706s? Oh yeah, we're going for the, the record for the world's fastest 706 motor in the world. Who has the record right now? I don't know, but we're going to. Right there, they're on, look at this right here. It says 706. That's already, yeah, already just over I mean, here. It's just, this is real. Just, we're not making shit up here. Fastest baddest 706 heads in the world. Um, let me put the rest of the studs in. Socket. Ben pulls the drill off. We had, uh, we're, we're missing one uh, washer. So Ben found a washer and um, <laughs> he went to drill it out. How hard is that? Do you have anything it's to say to the people at ARP? Very hard stuff. And uh, Ben was drilling it out for how long? Like a solid like five minutes. Yeah, it was very, very tough very hard stuff so i'm just tightening the head studs down i don't want anyone to comment on my pattern because it's probably not like specifically correct i don't even know what i'm saying uh, but it's not pacific i did uh it's not pacific i did uh 30 pounds now i'm gonna do 70 should i do 30 50 70 100 or should i go can i go right to 70 30, we can do 30 60 90 we can do 30 we 60 90. well we gotta go to 100 they said go 110 but you have to, I, I believe you have to be careful not to over tighten it and crack. Yes, aluminum block. Well, oh no, to crack the head as well, because it's a stock head, uh, thin deck. So, I'm uh, just trying to work it down there. On the copper head gaskets, when you tighten them, you just, you can go back over it if you like let it sit, go back over it at that last like final tightness or however tight it's gonna be. And you can, um, you can generally snug it down a little bit more as the, the copper head gasket compressors so what if you had to do all this with a wrench what if you had to do all this with a wrench what if there was old wrench slots in there you could turn it like a quarter to you know when you have to turn the wrench like half and then flip it over and mm -hmm. turn it the other half oh, yeah, that'd be terrible so we're just working it down i wonder if you know when you crack the head when you tighten it too much it like, makes a god awful noise or it just like keeps slowly like squishing down and then you're like, yep. <laughs> it's like when you keep when you keep turning the bolt right and it starts getting looser. It keeps getting fatter and fatter. You ready to do the next side? You want me to when you're doing the next side. Daddy's gotta take a break. Alright, I'll see y'all later. Oh god, I about tightened it down to a hundred. No! I about wow. did. I look I, I wrenched on it. That, that thing's about pissed. <laughs> Hey, when this one goes, the, the heads are folded up like that. <laughs> that one's going to hold the head down. going to hold it down. Decently. <laughs> All right. We'll repeat the process on the other side, and then we should have the heads on. And tomorrow when we get everything else, we got it. We're running an H3 oil pan, so we're keeping it like pretty budget cast pan. Uh, GM pickup tube, GM windage tray, which got a space out for the four-inch stroke crank. 
uh, ICT billet um, uh, valley cover. It's got the nice seals around here to block all this stuff off. Uh, melon oil pump, uh, factory LS3 front cover with a uh, cam gear, sorry, with cam sensor. And then the 58 tooth um, relaxer on the back with a factory crank sensor. So it's, it's honestly like a very simple budget setup. Nothing crazy, no custom parts, nothing like that. Everything's off the shelf that you can either get from TCAM, Summit Racing, Brian Tilly Racing, any of those. Like, this is all stuff. You can literally call up TCAM and say, hey, I want this, which I saw on, on John's video. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, I got it. Bring me a, a block and heads, and they'll do it. Or they'll source you a block and heads. So uh, we'll get this thing knocked out here and uh, should be making a whole lot of power. All right, guys, we got the heads on this thing. That's going to wrap up today's video. Tomorrow's video, uh, we got some running around to do and get some parts to finish putting this thing together. And uh, we're waiting on a couple more parts to come in and we'll get it all done. We ordered intake, uh, we ordered throttle body. I got a balancer here for it and I got an oil pan somewhere around here for it. So we should be good to go um, on this thing and uh, get ready to set in there and get Jason back here to start building the twin turbo kit. Waiting on some TDI turbos from Jose at Force Induction, so we'll get those in here. Uh, we're going to run an electric fuel pump. Squid Billy's going to come together pretty quick uh, because we don't have to do like anything, no radiator, no, no water pump, anything like that. Literally run fuel lines, fuel pump, uh, get motor set in there, and uh, hot side, cold side, plumb it up, good to go. So um, be exciting to see this thing come together. It's going to be a badass block, TCAM Performance. So if you guys need any machine work, hit up guys at TCAM Performance, and they'll get you right. And don't forget, this Sunday is the last day to win charlie murphy so if you want to win my five second turbo ls swap mustang you can go to lsnasty.com get entered to win we got new merchandise coming out soon and um yeah it's just every item you purchase is entered to win so go and uh, get you some merch get entered to win and we'll see you guys in tomorrow's upload